Excuse me while I erase this. This is projectile motion two. Flight time from height. Flight time find height. And what the mystery is, is that if something's shot up in the air and it comes back down, it turns out if you know the time for the entire flight, you can solve for max height. And it doesn't matter if it shot straight up and back down or if it's shot at an angle does not matter is time will always tell you the max height but you need to find um, one thing first but time will always tell you max height so a few things that we need to know velocity at the top in the wider so this is your up and down velocity component always equals zero Acceleration in the up and down direction always equals negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And time to the top always equals half of the total flight time. So those are your, like your initial notes. These are the things that we always need to go back to. Let's look at, I'm going to show you two examples. Okay, first, shot straight up in the air and comes straight back down. If the total flight time, we'll keep the numbers easy, is 10 seconds, was height, the up and down height. We also know that velocity final at the top equals zero. The velocity fired the initial velocity, we don't know. Acceleration in the y direction is always negative 9.8. And just the time to the top equals five seconds. So now let's pick a formula. First formula is, I'll pause while I write all right, so here's our options. We have two formulas that will give us what we're looking for. Unfortunately, both need a starting velocity, which we don't know. So what we have to do is solve for starting velocity first using this guy because I know this is zero. That's your starting velocity. Negative 9.8. Time is five seconds. So now I can solve for this. And then plug it into either one of these formulas, whichever one you like more. We cannot use this velocity as a no-no. This is only in the forward direction. So first thing I'm going to use is this formula. Do a little algebra. Velocity initial equals 9.8 times 5 equals 58. Uh, I don't know what that equals. Hold on. So velocity initial equals 49 meters per second. Yay. Let me clean up this page. All right, so now that I know the starting velocity that it's launched at is 49 meters per second, now I have everything, and I can put it into either of these formulas, whichever one you like more. 
I kind of like, I guess it doesn't matter. I like this one more, so I'm going to do this one. 0 squared equals 49 squared plus 2 times negative 9.8 times your change in distance. The reason I like this one more is because sometimes I'll forget that I have to fix these times and I accidentally put 10 seconds here and get it wrong. But now I don't have to mess with the whole time thing over here. Do a little algebra, flip these signs, and it's going to be, what's 49 squared? 49, oh boy, okay. 2401 equals negative 19.6 times engine distance. Negative 19.6. divided by 2401 divided by 19.6 equals 122 so our total height is 122 meters that process works no matter what we could just as easily look at it like this punter kicks a ball in uh, football, so let's kind of try to draw a football helmet. Shoulder pads. Oh boy. Oh boy. Looking good. Yeah. Okay. What else? So punter kicks a football, flies way over here, travels 80 meters. It's in the air for 4.5 seconds. Even though it has some angled launch, you still go through the exact same process. And what you end up finding is, when you solve for that initial velocity, that's really the velocity in the y angle. Oh boy. It's really the upward velocity that we're gonna use to find the time. So if I find velocity initial equals negative 9.8 times 2.25, half of 4.5, what I'm really solving for is the up and down component, the y component initial velocity. And let's say that's going to be like uh, 9.8 times 2.25. So that means the initial velocity is going to be 22.5. Is that what that was? I erased it. 22.5 meters per second upward. And I know the y velocity final at the very top equals zero. I know the acceleration, the y direction is negative 9.8. And then I can go and use my formula. All these y's have to match. So this would be velocity initial in the y, velocity final in the y. Right? So this is if you know time, no matter what the angle of the kick or throw or water balloon launch, you can always find the max height just by using time and the process we just saw.